Hi guys, welcome to part two of this video. What we're going to be talking about here is preparation for the colour palette. So I'll just be looking at some of the things that I normally put together in order to use the colour palette mode in Camera Lucida. This is going to probably end up as being a trilogy. There will probably be another video after this because I don't want to keep them long, just keep them short and to the point. So this one is primarily the, the sort of stuff I bring together just in preparation for the colour palette mode. It's not much, but it's worth having a look at i'll crack on see you in preparation of our color palette uh, part of this series i'm just going to go through the stuff that i would get together for the picture that we've been working on this is a winsor and newton cheap color set just so we keep it simple and i've created my winsor newton color swatch here which uh, obviously everybody does just take a bit of paint paint it on your normal material so you get an idea of the colors that so we need that that's just for mixing colors and checking what they look like got the original photograph of this rather sort of strange scene which is uh, the scene that we've pencil and pen and ink on so far and we're going to use this as the basis for our color palette tutorial using camera lucida so that's the original photograph that i just printed out the pen and ink that has been done over a little while probably spent probably about an hour and a half on this now it's a bit intricate with all these little lines and stuff probably a bit more intricate than i'd normally do but anyway that's that's that that's ready to go and uh, you've seen the video on that then what i do is i take a photograph of this and uh, i whack it into into google photos so i got a record of it and then i, I basically print it out on similar material so i've got i got the cheapest uh, material i could find crawford and black i got this in a special deal i think it's only 230 gsm acid free and uh it's good for sketching and stuff like that and takes watercolors quite well uh but I put this through my standard inkjet printer. I'll put up the settings, if I can remember, on the screen that I use, because it try and get a grey colour scheme going on Google Photos, so I edit the photo a little bit. And then um, and then I just put that through manual feed. It goes through fine on the inkjet printer. So now I've got a copy of this. Why do I need a copy of this? Well, what I do is when I'm, when I'm mixing my paints, uh, what I want to do is experiment on something. So obviously I don't want to redraw the whole thing again. Again. so I just print it out in grayscale black and white but sort of grayed and put it onto a similar material so when I mix my colors I can see exactly which colors I want to use for the main uh, picture now I can also see the effects that are I might have, you know, might try a little bit of stipple work on the tree, various things. Now, this is quite important for the color palette mode that we're going to be looking at because with the color palette mode, we're going to select probably eight colors and that'll do the whole thing. Obviously, we'll probably mix a few together, but eight colors will probably do the whole thing. And then what we'll do is we'll create our own colors and we'll use those colors on our on our, on our swatch. So we'll, we'll, create, we'll create our eight colors that we're going to use on a bit of paper. And then all we have to do is photograph those colors just splotched out on a bit of paper we only need to photograph those colors into camera lucida and it will map those colors whatever colors we're going to use into the picture and then we can swap the colors if we want to if they're not correct but that that's that's so powerful i mean that's that's one of the great things about camera lucida with the color palette mode what we're really doing is we're saying here's a here's a picture so we're going to take our photograph rip out all the colors put them into a palette then we mix up our colors to that palette or the colors that we want we can either use the palette or modify slightly the palette that camera lucida's created or we can create our own colors and put that on a bit of material and then re-upload it to camera lucida which will then use those colors in our picture so that's that's the that's the great benefit this is the paper i use that's our lining up sheet remember to use that to keep everything nice and square uh, that's a sample printout from one i did before which is just on normal paper and this was a, a palette that I printed out from a picked photograph and I said let's go into palette mode rip out eight colors it did that I modified them slightly and then I printed them out so that's another way of doing it because what you can do is you can now map, mix up your colors to match these once you've mixed them up in your palette uh, you can then use those colors and it will show you which colors which will go through in camera lucida and you can use those colors in your picture brilliant and this is just a load of crib sheets. Um, and this is all the stuff we're gonna be going through in terms of the palette. It was really quite straightforward once you get used to it. Now the whiskey is completely optional, but um, is a daily requirement really, just to uh, life ticking away. 
So that is optional, but in my case, probably essential. Don't, we don't need that. We don't need that. We need that occasionally just to check we're in square. Uh, cheap material, similar to what you're gonna be painting on. Take a photograph of your masterpiece. Just take a photograph of it on your on your iPhone or phone and then whack it up into Google Photos. Put the settings up for what I use, but basically I'm just bleaching out the whites, uh, exaggerating the blacks, making them grayscale, printing them out and fed on my inkjet printer. So it's not the same size, but it will give me an idea for mixing colors. That's my original photograph, and then we'll be creating a swatch. So this is my swatch. So I know I'm repeating myself here, but this is my swatch that I use for the Winsor Newton. So this is just literally me taking a dab of, of paint out of my little portable paint box and dabbing it on here. So I know which colors these mix to. And now obviously when we've told camera Lucida to rip apart this photograph and create eight colors or 16, probably eight colors, we'll need to mix up our colors on, on our palette so we'll have like eight little squares with different colors in it and those eight will match the colors that we want for our picture absolute genius the whole thing is one aspect of camera lucida just one little aspect that will allow you to easily match your colors to your photograph which will then be matched to your line or pencil picture i tend to do it in in pen and ink don't really know why i quite like them sometimes i just leave them like that to be fair um kind of getting more into into water coloring them i quite like the effect sometimes it feels a little bit worrying because it feels like you're probably going to mess the picture up but ultimately you don't so all we're going to be doing is mapping our colors from here into camera lucida using the color palette creating a palette of eight colors mixing those colors doing a few samples on here just to check the colors are right then whacking into here that's all going to be in the next one uh, hopefully i'm going to be showing you all this while you can see me pen and inking and rubbing out the pencil on this picture in the background just to keep you amused and there we are that's all we need total thing all that lot there probably about 10 uk pounds 12 dollars um, and I've got a pad with uh, that, that's 16 sheets in there so you know this this little palette here which I take out when I go walking or sitting in a coffee shop and doing some doodles uh, I take this with me great little things there they're literally about 10 pounds you know 12 dollars something like that you don't need all this flash watercolor stuff you really don't you can get some really good colors with this and obviously um some brushes i go for the cheapy ones because all i need anyway i hope that's helped that's um hopefully probably part two done now and then we'll rack on to part three actually doing it all thanks again and i will see you all soon